Good morning. On behalf of the RSD team, I would like to welcome you all for this lecture on assistive technology and human co-design initiative. Uh, Dr. Kyle Kane is currently a lecturer at uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the Department of Material Science and Engineering. He teaches computation material science, uh, human-centered design, and engineering technology that, that helps people with disabilities. His passion towards inspiring communities to create solutions for uh, visually challenged and specially able community made him guide this team at uh, Human Co-Design Initiative. When we're speaking about the Human Co-Design Initiative, it is a cooperative of individuals, organizations, and institutions working together to increase the awareness about how designers, makers, and engineers can apply their skill in collaboration with people who have disabilities through the HCDA approach to develop new and innovative technologies. So today we are fortunate enough to have members of such good community here, including Ms. Radhika here, who is a petroleum engineer from Mana University. Currently, she's working as an energy security research analyst at ENR Securities Incorporation. She has more than seven years of experience in energy industries at five countries. She's also been supporting the CDI as a project manager over the last two years. So welcome, Radhika. Then we also have uh, Mr. Prithvi Raj, who's a lead UX designer. He's in, uh, he has done his master's in design from IIT Kanpur, and uh, he has more than six years of industrial experience and has been working for the visually challenged community for since 2013. We also, we also have Mr. Praveen Kumar, who's a founder of uh, Textroware Devices, which is an assistive tech startup incubated at IITM Incubation Cell. Textroware devices aspires to be a single stop for the development of affordable assistive technologies. Their main mission is to create a sustainable ecosystem so that fosters growth and not just for differently abled people, but also makes products that improve the functional capabilities of normal people too. So on behalf of RSD, I'd like to welcome you all and thanks a lot for uh, like having your spending your time on us and uh, over to you guys. Yeah, thank you. Um, hi, uh, thank you so much for that amazing intro. You actually saved me a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, just, just hold on a moment. Just give me 10 more seconds and I'll be good to go. I'm going live in just a second. Can, can everybody hear me? Yeah, hi, this is Radhika here. I am the project manager of HCI, and I'm glad to meet you all, um, albeit virtually. Uh, so I started my uh, journey with uh, HCI uh, two years back. And in short, I would say this is one of the most um, ethical and the most human society that I've ever been part of. So what is HDR does? Um, I, can, I can go long about uh, what HDR does, but I'm just gonna talk in short. It's basically uh, providing free and affordable assistive technology for people with disabilities all over the world. I know all over the world sounds very, uh, massive or like a, or too big of a vision to achieve but actually it is being achieved by HCDI for the last uh, six years ever since it was started by Dr. Kyle and um, Dr. Kyle himself is a visually impaired uh, scientist and a lecturer at MIT and it the society was formed duly I would say due to the frustration that he had that 
uh, that there was so much of ignorance around this whole assistive technology field, right? Uh, I would say that there are there are very less startups. There is very less awareness. There is there are very few people, investors, uh, you know, seed funding in in this entire arena. No matter there, there has been so much technology advancements in AI, in coding, and so many other fields that is uh, focused on developing other areas. But uh, there is this little big community all over the world that has millions of people who are people with disabilities who lack assistive technology, who, who are not able to afford assistive technology because by the time a product a, a, a project becomes a product, there's so much of overhead costs added up that the end user who is a PWD is not able to afford, especially in India. You know how uh, the pay scale is for, for someone who is physically challenged, right? Uh, uh, in fact, I would I would like to say that uh, we shouldn't call them uh, people with disability. I would say they are specially able, right? And and we in HDI we usually call them uh, specially able friends. Uh, and um, and other thing is that why uh, I have been part of HDI is is not just because of the brand tag it has. Uh, because of a professor from MIT, but it's purely because of my personal experience that I had at um, one of the HCI events that happens in Chennai. So it happens every year in India, in all over the major cities. And um, so this, this event just popped up on my Facebook algorithm and I didn't know what the event was about. So I thought, yeah, I'm just free over the weekend and I just registered and uh, what happened, I, I happened to meet these co-creators. So what we do is, the uh, Kyle brings in co-creators who are basically people with disabilities, and then a huge group of uh, students from MIT who are researchers or students, and also the, the, the public who have registered for the event. So we all three of us collaborate, and we are divided into teams. And what happens is we listen to the problems of co-creators, what they have uh, to face in every day-to-day -day life. A simple task in itself is a huge challenge for them. Which, which sucks the energy, the time, emotional exhaustion uh, from them when they can invest their time in something else that they value or are talented in. Like for example, Ma'am, you're on mute. I'm sorry, you're yeah, muting. Sorry. Uh, Radhika, I think you got, you went on mute. Uh, let me call Radhika. Then he solely uh, does hard work uh, and wants to invest his money in his daughter's education. And he couldn't do that because he didn't have the right technology or the device for him to just get inside the first step of the bus. You know? Uh, can you hear us? Yeah. You were on mute uh, for around a minute, and that's the reason I called you. I think there was some glitch. So we couldn't hear last two sentences of yours. Okay. How about now? We can hear you fine now. Yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. I think there was a glitch. Yeah. So, so where was that? Yeah. So he said the, the first step to get inside the bus in itself was a challenge for him. So that kind of impacted me very um, emotionally on a deeper level. And, uh, and it kind of also gave me an alarming message that every day that we ignore assistive technology, we ignore the investment, we ignore creating ideas in schools and colleges, in corporates, it's every day is a delay for that person to actually have the device so that he can focus on his work, right? And um, another example that I would like to cite is I'll just share my screen. Can I, can I share my screen please for a moment? Yeah, sure, you can yeah. put in this. Uh, no, just a minute, I'll give you access. Now you can share actually. So, 
can you all see the the picture of two amazing scientists um for for i'm, I'm sure the, the one on the right is very common uh, commonly known he's mr dr stephen hawking and one on the left is dr helen keller and both of them are amazing amazing um uh, legendary phenomenal uh, science brilliant people who are from two different time ages right i she is from the, uh, the the late 20th century and he's from the latest 21st century but the difference between both is like helen keller she was uh, she was dumb she was deaf and she couldn't hear so all she had was her fingers um, to to touch someone's vocal cord and their lips to actually understand or guess what they were talking and that was the lack of the assistive technology that actually took her a lot of time to actually communicate rather than inventing so many things if she had the same technology uh, that stephen hawking had she would have probably released like 10 extra books 10 other inventions right but on the other hand stephen hawking he was blessed to have this technology so that he gave us amazing theories in quantum physics that is being used uh, in date till now and uh, this is this is probably the the most best example i give all the time in my speeches about how assistive technology may, can make a difference in 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 a person who is uh, specially able uh, right so that's the thing so moving forward um, i'm going to let my teams akar and master present and they have uh, been developing their project uh, patiently for the last 3 4 years it was it was not a overnight success they were going through a lot of ups and downs and i'm so proud to say that this community uh, has been running with volunteers and has been churning startups uh, acting as an incubator without any funding so far so just imagine if we start applying for grants which we are and we start having investors who actually care about assistive technology then this is going to go big and we also have more projects in um, us we also have 30 other startup projects from saudi arabia um, so like i said it's a vast ocean and and it's a vast society that we are all connected uh, virtually and um, and uh, i would also say please do look into our website humanistic.app and if you and if you want to volunteer or if you have any project ideas that you want to be mentored for that is related to assistive technology do send me an email or shoot shoot me uh, a text in whatsapp and we can get connected and take you on board for the community i would also encourage all the students researchers all over india who are especially part of mechanical engineering electrical engineering computer science engineering at least spend one semester at least spend one thesis project that is related to assistive technology because i'm telling you in india especially a true fact is that not many people know this school students uh, who are specially challenged are not allowed to study computer science maths or stem subjects because government does not include them in 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 the curriculum as a subject at all and one of the uh, biggest uh, uh, uh lawyers i would say in, in high court uh, miss miss arpagam who is a visually impaired person she was telling that she had to choose law though law is an amazing subject but she had to choose law because she had no choice of becoming a doctor because she had zero curriculum about stem subjects that's because of zero lack of assistive technology have been have proper i on your language or the full stops on the you know the lettering facing how it's done everything is fit i think we have lost call hello again it was like you had the senior technical support executive it was an inbound call center so we were taking call from it is not so we absolutely not the support just the transition hello uh, i think we are hearing someone else speak as well is that a part of no 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 no, no it's not yeah I'm going to write it down. Okay, someone is talking. Um, can you please fix that, Shreya? Um, sure. Yeah. I think it's fine now. I mean, yeah. Yeah. 
Cool. So, uh, thank you so much for the time and giving this opportunity. And I'm gonna um, ask the three to take over to present this project on Aka. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, Radhika. Thanks for that wonderful introduction. Um, thanks, Sriram, for uh, connecting us. And uh, um, it's a privilege to be able to present to uh, this esteemed audience um, all across India and abroad, I guess. Um, so I'm Prithviraj. I have been working with Usually Challenge since 2013 out of my personal interest. It started uh, when I was in Chennai as a software developer. I used to visit the Anna Center Navy Library and uh, uh, talk to them, involve with them, and eventually when I moved to moved for my master's in IIT Kanpur in design, I visited the blind school there and both the years in my master's I had continuous engagement with them. It was, um, um, it was a, a revelation for me uh, because, not because uh, they were different, but because I was cut down from friends uh, from the other community. So I had the opportunity to meet these friends and uh, uh, explore a few uh, few new things, many, many revelations happened there. So what I would be sharing today is uh, a project called APAP. And uh, the, there is a qu quite an amount of teamwork in the background, and I'll be talking about this, and also where we stand now, and what kind of uh, engagement can we have with the community who is in the audience listening to us today. So let me uh, share the screen. Can you uh, make me the uh, co-host, Srira? Yeah, just this, this moment. Yeah, I can see it now. So I'll make it full screen. Let me know if you're able to see my full screen here. Yeah, we're able to see it. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me minimize. Just a moment. I need to minimize this first. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, this is Project Akar, um, Akar meaning shapes, as you all know in Hindi and Sanskrit, uh, is about designing solutions for the visually challenged um, to enable them learn geometry, right? Um, so basically the geometric education in India is, uh, is there is a need for enhancement in geometric education in India today. Uh, this is based on our research that we have found that the visually challenged kids in India are sometimes exempted from writing the geometric exams, geometry mathematics exams, because there are lack of resources that enable the teachers to teach them geometry. And so eventually these kids grow up and pass out and are lacking a huge skill set of uh, basic geometry, which they can use or leverage to get into STEM education later. But because we are exempting them all along, we are, uh, doing an, in a way a huge injustice for what they can capably exhibit to us. Like Radhika showed us, uh, there are quite a few disabled, uh, distinguished uh, friends out there who have accomplished so much that uh, the so-called normal uh, people can't do, right? Now, having said that, uh, how can we enable uh, this gap or how can we fill this gap by enabling the visually challenged kids learn geometry is all uh, the scope of this project. So I am presenting this on behalf of the whole team here. So the team includes three uh, students from NAT Varangal who have now graduated and have gone for higher studies or working in some other organizations. For example, Sartak here was a part of this uh, humanistic co-design workshop, which was conducted by Dr. Kyle Keen in Hyderabad in 2019, January. I was also a part of the same workshop. Um, and uh, that is where we got to have a uh, introduction to each other. And uh, the problem that was identified at that time was that uh, the status of visually challenging uh, kids in India was not very uh, friendly for them in terms of learning geometric aspects. So the teacher might easily deny, uh, which looks like uh, relieving but it is not relieving it is actually uh, you are you are actually stopping them from learning what they are capable of learning right so this problem was identified in the day one of the workshop where dr kyle provided enough opportunity for the team members for the new joinees who came to the workshop to mingle with these visually challenged co-creators 
who were there in, uh, in the institute at that point in time. Now, that one day was fully to empathize and understand. So we found out quite a few problems and of which Sarthak uh, found this problem very pressing. So he went back to NIT Warangal and uh, got together two other uh, kind-hearted, interested uh, uh, students, Shantanu and Daksh, who collaborated and worked over the last uh, around one and a half years in coming up with a solution by keeping the co-creators, the visually challenged in the center and not making any assumptions, but rather taking their insights, trying to understand where they uh, need some support and designing solutions. And all along, Dr. Kyle has been supporting them immensely uh, with his time and uh, immense knowledge in, in this area. So I come in here as, as an implementer and I'll, I'll showcase you how uh, I am making an industry connection to get these products implemented. And Indrayod, this is a student uh, currently at MIT, and uh, he, is, uh, he and I are working together to create a train the trainers curriculum that enables this program to spread further. Now, looking at the ground reality, right, like India is home to around 20% of the visually challenged community. And uh, so it has around 40 million people there. Only one in 13 visually challenged kids uh, visit school in India. And uh, so you can understand that also is just 15,000 out of the 2 lakh children. Now, having said that, even though these kids are visiting schools, it is from research found that only around less than 1.5% of teachers are equipped to teach the specially abled kids, which means even if these visually challenged kids, which already are in low numbers when they are going to school, are further uh, having lack of resources to learn things. So it is, it is the lack of resources at various levels that kind of cuts off them from basic aspects of learning, which we take for granted, right? And uh, this is not just the case in India. What we also see is in many other developing countries. For example, the statement that you see at the bottom is from a research from Africa, South Africa. And uh, it is validated that even there, the situation is the same. So there is a systemic approach needed here to enable the uh, visually challenged kids to learn geometry. And so that is where after quite a few iterations, we have come up with a set of solutions, which we can definitely call it as baby steps towards solving this problem. And we definitely need much more uh, uh, work to do. But then we have had very encouraging positive feedback when we took these puzzles out there uh, to the world. Uh, to just quickly introduce you uh, to the puzzles in front of you. So these puzzles are designed to enable the visually challenged kids feel, tactilely feel uh, the shapes in front of them understand the basics of geometry and also play with it to create some compound shapes and create and learn by their own. Right? So what you see here in the green color is the base plate, which is 3D printed, which has uh, engraving in it along the same shapes of those two white triangles, which are removable pieces. These two white triangles, the same two white triangles can be arranged in different ways, whatever you see in the first row. And the base plate allows you to do that by the engra engraving that it has in it. Now, uh, that is the first aspect of teaching shapes at a high level and then compound shapes on how you combine these shapes and start um, uh, forming new shapes. And this solution allows the visually challenged to feel because the green plate is at one particular height and the white pieces are a bit taller than the uh, green plate. And so you can still feel it, remove it, put it and, and learn it. Uh, similarly, to make this concept a bit more fun, one exploration that uh, the team has also done is to bring in monuments that can be felt in a tactile way for the visually challenged kids. All that you see at the bottom, if you take the example of Leaning Tower of Pisa, uh, the green pieces are all a single piece put together uh, by a 3D printer. So it is a single base plate into which those white pieces are removable pieces that can be assembled. So kind of teaching the uh, shapes of how basic shapes can be converted into or in, in other words, being used in architecture these days. Uh, and how does that translate across architecture? For example, the window, the white window that you see in the Leaning Tower of Pisa, can be used to replace a window in the Taj Mahal piece also. It is the same window, same dimensions. 
even though it is abstracted it is it is one way to uh, teach kids that architectures across cultures and across regions in the world are using same uh, uh, structures and that way it it gives you an engaging way of relating or associating what shapes mean to you right and uh, the the minars that you see here in taj mahal those pillars one one half of that minar fits exactly in the horizontal bar in the eiffel tower so that also is is a connection between the eiffel tower and the taj mahal so that way we are trying to make connections we are trying to make geometry fun for the kids to learn and if you also look at it the there is another level of depth here in terms of concepts we can of course take it to uh, different levels of depth based on the child's uh, learning level at at this point in time for example the dome on the taj mahal is supposed to be a hemisphere but here in a 2d structure you see it as a semicircle so a 3d hemisphere can be projected as a 2d semicircle in in a flat surface is another concept that we are trying to uh, introduce now sometimes it is easy for us to assume that um, these are these are obvious concepts but uh, the challenge is what is a straight line is taught to us by vision and unless you are helping a visually challenged kid associate what a straight line is by his tactile or some other perceptions of what he is able to perceive he or she is able to perceive you have not yet set the common ground of when you say a straight line that is what appears in the imagery in the in the person's head right so what is a triangle is three straight line segments but that that is not so easy for for a visually challenged kid to automatically perceive unless you give a common language to start with and that is absolutely lacking from our research to some extent to in majority of the schools there are special schools which are taking effort to uh, do this but that doesn't satisfy the scale of need that is existing in our country and across the world as well so this solution is a starting point in which we can create that common language when you say a triangle the visually challenged kid is able to understand what a triangle is and then start a discussion on it rather than going a lost in first of all trying to understand what a triangle is right so that is where we are starting this is just a baby step like i told and we are looking forward to take this further this like i said started with uh, these three students now they have passed out and under the guidance of uh, dr kyle and uh, since its inception in 2019 the students had visited uh, uh, the blind school devnar blind school in hyderabad and also louis adas blind school in varangal uh, continuously while designing while testing and around 60 visually challenged students were met and 10 visually impaired teachers were also met and we of course have new suggestions coming up and we need some support uh, in terms of workforce and also in terms of passionate uh, people uh, funding and taking this forward uh, we'll also talk about a, a particular model in which we are already able to take these puzzles uh, to the community in a couple of slides i'll show you that now in addition to this if you look at the left hand side of the slide uh, we have also designed a container that holds this puzzles robustly without letting them break that easily and this is also a 3d printed design and uh, for example if you see the base plates uh, to the left hand side here at the bottom you can see the taj mahal without the white pieces that's how the base plate independently looks like so you can put all these base plates into this 3d printed container along with the puzzle pieces so the reason we went into such nitty gritty details of packaging also is because these solutions are being designed for the visually challenged kids and they should last a bit longer than uh, what typically a cardboard uh, tactile puzzle can last because uh, there will be multiple kids using it and uh, it is possible that it can be dropped and so there is a strength test there there is there is a material there is availability of uh resources to get this done all that to be taken into consideration so there have been quite a few iterations we also tried printing braille on this and initial trials were not very successful because of the material used so we are still uh, uh trying to uh, cope up with that and we have found a couple of new solutions that we are still working on now what was very encouraging for us to see is that uh, uh for example you see a uh, comment from raju from 6th grade in louis adas blind blind school that this is the first time he is able to touch taj mahal and, and feel it in other ways he can see it 
so far he has only been able to hear about it and of course when you hear you can imagine things of what you want it to be uh, it's like an elephant being explained but then you might not have a big picture yes this is this is an abstract way of taj mahal but then there there is a reference for him now to say there is a dome there is a pillar there are a couple of pillars there are, there is a structure and stuff so that gets you a bit closer to the reality one step ahead than where the situation was and uh, with that we we plan to take this for further to more kids what you see here is raju is one kid in in varangal uh, who is able to touch this now now like many of the projects that we do end up in be it a student project or various other projects it is important for us to take those project outside otherwise they remain in the shelves so uh, my uh, sincere uh, effort was to take this project forward and make connections and see how this can be uh, reaching various other schools visually challenged schools and that is where uh, i made the connection with the skei school uh, where, which has atal tinkering labs 3d printer in it uh, so where we are collaborating with these teachers and students sighted students in this sri kamala bai uh, education institution in bangalore to uh, to collaborate with them in uh, better utilizing 3d printers available there to uh, print solutions that the visually challenged kids can use later so to the left hand side you see our our story so far we, dr kalkin uh, and we coming up with a solution uh, in the center with the circle you see uh, the atal tinkering labs in ska i'll give you a context of what atal tinkering labs right so it is uh, it is a 3d printing lab supported by the government of india and it is being implemented in more than 6000 schools in india uh, for selected schools where the students sighted students can learn tinkering 3d printing and learn a bit more about technology and come up with how they can bring out their visions into reality right now with that previously they used to have syllabus in terms of getting their solutions printed for example uh, in in a sem in a semester or a six months project they might uh, learn to 3d model they would print a few uh, puzzle pieces or they will print a few pieces of what they like to print it's typically toys or keychains and they exhibit it and then these pieces are left uh, they they would of course most probably not be used but in, uh, the plan was by collaborating with the school we wanted to uh, not just help them print these akar puzzles instead of those simple keychains which are not going to be used later so can't we print these akar puzzles and take them to usually challenge kids after they are printed so that the outcomes do not end up in a shelf but become a life changing opportunity for visually challenged kids to learn geometry so that is where the effort is and we have uh, started literally this uh, this activity in september in 2020 and uh, in the midst of covid and this is one program that has successfully sustained but uh, the the process of not just uh, 3d printing multiple puzzles but we have also been able to very proudly uh, we say that we have also been able to uh, help the sighted kids empathize with their visually challenged friends which they have which they have, about whom they have not thought of so far generally uh, try to understand their real challenges so we designed solutions or tasks for them to understand the challenges for example i explain an image to you which you have not seen at all for the first uh, forever and you start sketching it and when you see the ground ground reference image which i explained to you and what you drew you understand how different those two images can be right um uh, so that way as we design some tasks we ask them to blindfold and walk we ask them to recognize their uh, currency notes using uh, blindfolded activities so there were various ways we tried to bring the kids to that empathy of what the visually challenged kid goes through and also design curriculum or uh, train the trainers the syllabus for the teachers on how they can take the design thinking approach to help the sighted kids design more solutions building over akar solutions for the visually challenged so this is like a win win situation not just for the visually challenged kids who will eventually get the puzzles uh, to test and learn from but the sighted kids are also learning empathy and they they can understand that a simple activity as a part of their curriculum can be a life changing impact impactful solution for someone else that is is a big achievement uh, personally i feel and so we are also collaborating with uh, very uh, kind hearted organizations like a kadamar uh, humanistic co-designers who we are uh, of course with uh, dr kyle support from mit 
we are also collaborating with uh, national association for the blind we are starting the connections we, uh, and we look forward to take this forward and currently uh, we are in bangalore and we have tried to uh, create some impact in skei there is also a cohort in saudi saudi arabia who are printing these puzzles and trying to understand what is the impact needed there and and uh, in terms of the need for such a solution there is a need uh, already uh, that is identified so there there are also being trials and errors on how this can be a sustainable solution uh, implemented there in boston dr kail and indra are already printing and like i mentioned there are uh, challenges in south south africa and we have a contact now in germany to see what can be done so uh, one part of the solution is to find the need second is to have a sustainable way of implementing things and third is of course the support of passionate people who want to support this activity so this is where uh, we have grown from from um, empathy to ideation to testing and implementation and here in march 2021 we are trying to apply for grants around and uh, um, make some funding create some funding and so far we have sustained without any funding from uh, from external sources uh, so it has been a collaborative effort and a passionate effort from the team and uh, that's how we, we have come across so far so just to give you a set of uh, uh, conclusion about the team members so we we have been working around and what we look forward to is to uh, uh, to invite uh, kind hearted uh, people from this community to join us in terms of either taking this forward implementing making connections or in terms of uh, connecting us with funds so that this effort goes forward and and creates an impact for those visually challenged uh, kids out there uh, they are our visually challenged friends who are uh, who are our, our friends who we can make a small impact and they, then they can give back probably in terms of novels and stories like uh, radhika was mentioning about uh, helen killer right so uh, looking forward to collaborating with you guys and you can reach out to me uh, on on this particular email id Uh, Radhika will also share her contact uh, by the end of the session. So feel free to reach out to us, and we'll be happy to uh, see how we can uh, collaborate. And it would be an immense opportunity to make an impact uh, in visually challenged kids' lives. Thank you so much. I think uh, with that, I can pass it on to Praveen, who will be talking about his startup with uh, respect to uh, assistive technology. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay. So, if I can go next. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Praveen. Yeah, you can yeah. go on. Yeah. Yeah, so hi everyone i'm pravin kumar and uh, you know thank you uh, radhika thank you shriram thank you the whole the rsd uh, night in madras for you no know, conducting this event and inviting us it's you know, given an immense pleasure to you know talk in front of you so yeah hi um the founder of dextrova devices and assistive tech uh, startup uh, you know, incubated at iitm incubation cell you know, i jumped into entrepreneurship as soon as i completed my undergrad with the trust and belief that uh, you know, some of my projects executed during uh, my college days uh, if bought out to the real world market would create uh, at least some impact uh, to the society uh, you no know, as a classic engineer uh, you know i i created the solution and then found out the problem So our first product that will be launched is Mouseware. You know, it is an uh, head wearable device that enables uh, the hands-free operation of computers and smartphones with simple head movements. You uh, know, this eliminates the requirement of uh, users' hands to operate the smart devices, and is specifically designed for people with uh, an upper limb disability or injuries. You Now, the product's main objective is to you know, provide a virtual hand uh, for people who are unable to use their hands to interact with the technology, and also aims to provide uh, them with equal or job opportunities. I'll just show sharing a small presentation. I'll try. I'll try not to make it as a sales pitch. I'll uh, keep it as small as possible. So, uh, uh, Shri Ram, uh, could you please go turn on the uh, sh sh share screen option? Yeah, sure. Just a moment. Uh...
Good. Thanks. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah. So, the, I'll talk about the problem that we are addressing. Uh, no, 40,000 people per year lose their upper limbs and 85% uh, no, continue to live without any solution. And almost for every 1 lakh population in India, almost 2,394 uh, no, people are diagnosed with uh, uh, neurological problems like uh, cerebral palsy, Parkinson's disease, uh, no, all the neurological problems. And almost 94,000 people per year suffer hand fractures, no, injuries, no, like uh, no, meeting with fatal road accidents or uh, no, having a trigger finger due to extensive usage of computers. Uh, no, it's pathetic to see these uh, no, pictures uh, where uh, people find it uh, uh, so difficult to operate the you know, the technology. So we want to know, uh, you know create a technology that enables the people to access technology. As you know, Radhika also mentioned in the first, it all depends on the tech. So uh, Dr. Stephen Hawking was so fortunate uh, uh, that he could access computers even without hands. But on the other hand, Hela Keller uh, was not able to you know, uh, uh, you know, access the tech. So we want to you know, bridge this gap. So that's why we came up with a single solution to, to solve all these problems. Asset, a head wearable device that enables hands-free operation of computers and smartphones with simple head movements. All the person uh, needs to do is to, to wear our headgear that is in form of our headphones in this prototype. Uh, no, move, the, uh, move your head in the, in the direction the mouse cursor has to be moved. Uh, so that's it. You just need to wear your device and move your head and... Uh, you no, know, the mouse cursor moves along with you. This is a simple demonstration where, uh, you no, know, myself, I draw a uh, you know, picture without using my hands. Yeah. So next comes the clicking. For clicking, uh, uh, we have four different uh, you know, options, uh, like the byte switch, like the microlite switch. You no know, byte switch is nothing but you no know, a button that comes between our, uh, uh, you know, uh, between our lips. The microlite switch. Uh, people with limited access over hands can use the microlite switch that placed on, uh, on a table or somewhere. The foot tap switch is nothing but a self-explanatory switch that comes under the foot. And we are now currently working on a uh, blink switch uh, you know, using uh, by tapping the EOG signals, the optical uh, signals from the eye using blink. The kick happens for the typing. Yeah, we have the speech to text engine with all the Indian ag languages uh, and Indian English ac accent as well. But, I mean, the existing, uh, you know, the assistive text, uh, they have the speech to text engine, but no, it's all on uh, either it's on uh, an American English accent, which is hard for you no know, Indians to use, or doesn't. I mean, if the person do not, you uh, know. Uh, uh, do not know English, what would he do? So we have uh, uh, solved this uh, problem as well. Uh, so yeah, with this, you no, know, we can confidently say that uh, the, the person using our device can uh, perform all kinds of computer operations. Uh, you no know, click and drag, uh, you no know, type long documents, even watch Netflix, anything. So who's solving the similar problem? Uh, Prosthetics is a great alternative, uh, but uh, if you see, they cannot be used to uh, you know, control computers unless otherwise it's a bionic prosthetic, which goes uh, uh, like it, uh, it starts from uh, 10 lakhs, it goes to 15 lakhs. No, other of our competitors, uh, uh, yeah, they are also doing a good job in the respective fields. But uh, uh, no, uh, they do not provide uh, smartphone access. But we are trying to provide uh, you know, the computer usage, smartphone usage with speech to text enabled at a budget price. If you see their cost, it starts from uh, 40,000 to 70,000 to 80,000. I mean, that's, that's, uh, I mean, in foreign countries, affordability may, might not be a uh, big issue, but uh, India, uh, differently able people uh, need an affordable tech, assistive tech. So that's why we have planned to come around, around the range of uh, uh, 15,000. So who would use this and why? Differently able people, now I said uh, 34,000 people per year, uh, no, I have their hands uh, amputated uh, and forced, uh, no, uh, like, okay, uh, physical work, uh, people might choose other uh, jobs other than computers, but they require hands to do that. Uh, so they are either, for, uh, they are forced to take a computer oriented job where they can sit in a place and, uh, uh, you know, work. 
so we are trying to know provide an uh, a white collar job to the uh, pw this and enhance their lives and three crore people suffer from neurological uh, disorders i mean computer jobs are highly paid right uh, uh, compared to other jobs as well uh, so you know we can uh, enable the independency and we are trying to provide a better livelihood and the people suffering from uh, you know chronic hand conditions due to extensive computer usage that accounts to 4.6 lakh and they can use our device as a temporary mouse until their hands heal and uh, if you see 20% of the total fracture cases corresponds to upper limb injuries uh, what limited medical leave and you no know, paid leaves are given for the employees and job loss is also possible uh, so we want to address them as well uh, but the most hard hitting point is this almost 2000 i mean almost 5.53 lakh you know students uh, are uh, you know going to schools and colleges without hands uh you know as as uh, you know someone stated previously yeah uh, computer uh, uh, access should be enabled for all children irrespective of their uh, challenge so we want to address this as well this is a very short uh, uh, you know demo this is a latest prototype uh, so this this you no know, just a lab prototype that we did and we are planning i mean we have the prototype ready we are going for the field testing uh, uh by next month and i mean due to the covid no there is a slight delay so we will be going for the field testing we have already interacted with few users so yeah so no in this video is just an uh, a small click where uh, you know the mouse moves with my head movement so yeah we are talking about you uh, know innovation but innovation is incomplete if there is no inclusion so that's why uh, uh in this a second uh, yeah okay so no uh, that's why we want to know uh, address the assistive tech no assistive tech is uh, no any device or software that enables people uh, work around their challenges and uh, no anything no assistive tech includes low tech uh, tools like a pencil grip a pencil grip is also an assistive tech in other ways no and uh, any mission that uh, makes our lives easier called us to tech uh, no the classic examples of uh, no assistive tech we come across day to day lives is an auto predict or auto correct features in our smartphones so it's a great example uh, they make they make our life easy right no speech to text text to speech all those were initially assistive text but later expanded to uh, you know address all common people as well uh, no sometimes uh, you know choosing assistive tech uh, uh, you know can be challenging one good approach is to, uh, to choose assistive tech uh, that targets and specific struggle for example if uh, if a child struggles with writing the child can go uh, trying dictation software as the child speaks the word appears on the screen right now the best way to uh, as a developer Uh, the best way to invent us to tech is to have a pool of cooperative individuals organizations institutions working together that's the that's the whole process of co creation and uh, at hcdi we believe uh, 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 you know co creating and assistive tech is the best way to invent an assistive tech not just sitting at a lab uh, no this will increase awareness about how designers engineers can apply their skills in collaboration with people with uh, uh, disabilities uh, through co create process to develop new uh, assistive tech no uh, i went through an article in where you no know, many low income and uh, uh uh you no know, middle income countries only 5 to 15% of people who require uh, assistive devices and technology have awareness about them production is low and often of limited quantity you no know, high tech devices is best seen in sophisticated electronics and uh, computers you no know, medium tech devices are uh, you know, relatively complicated mechanical uh, devices such as wheelchairs uh no these i mean these are the classic uh, i mean uh, not classic but different types of assistive tech the high tech the medium tech and the low tech uh then the next important uh, thing to consider while making an assistive tech is to consider the side effects of using device i mean i still remember dr kyle kane saying that uh, uh, uh no uh, and that should not be this should not cause a secondary problem while using an particular assistive tech for example uh, uh, consider an uh, person with lower limb disability using crutches the person is expected to place those holders under the user's armpit so what if the design was in such a way that uh, where the users place in the position much below the armpit so this will gradually create more pain in that area no the design of the assistive tech is uh, you know more important here uh 
no some uh, people sh uh, will feel uh, uncomfortable with the idea of being monitored in their uh, in the own home i mean creating ancestral tech should not alienate them it should not no uh, uh, make them feel apart from the society we should get the balance right so that's why you know i believe that uh, you know creating ancestral tech is more challenging than creating the uh, uh, other techs as well uh so yeah in in india you no know, uh, 32 lakh uh, literates uh, are uh, you no know, person with disabilities although they possess uh, you no know, potential skills to work they lack the tool to access technology and uh, as you, as uh, prithvi said almost two, 285 million are estimated to be visually impaired around the world and 39 uh, uh, no million are totally uh, totally visually impaired and 246 million have low vision now, according to who uh, statistics who stat statistics and india you no know, being largest uh, you no know, blind population at uh, you know, almost 12 to 15 million you no know, startups across india are beginning to create uh, you know, affordable and uh, you no know, customized products for this under under served segment i'm happy to see uh, you know many assistive tech uh, startups are coming up uh, Uh, though this is mainly due to the government of india no even in uh, the union budget 2021 government of india has allocated uh, uh, almost 1100 crores especially for the uh, no assistance i mean uh, for the assistive tech uh, uh, no invention uh, no for people with uh, no for disabilities no which is under the department of uh, disability affairs many uh, uh, no ngos in india like accessible india campaign uh, no enable india is working uh, uh, you know towards uh, mediating requests for the development of pwd infrastructure uh, but uh, no at the end of the day you see con considering the uh, conditions in india uh, it's hard for an engineer to develop and tech for uh, you know pwd in india so if you see uh, uh, india's road conditions and train uh, features are and pwd friendly even though uh, we create tech uh, uh, a navigation stick for uh, a visually impaired person or an innovative uh, you know uh, wheelchair for uh, uh, limb disability the environment is in friendly here so uh, what do we we create if you are selling your tech in india uh, we should make sure it's compatible with here in india not just in india wherever uh, no that has to create tech is virtually created so i feel the space is underserved in india i mean we are the startups are coming right now but it should uh, no improve i mean how uh, uh, how many of them you no know, uh, offices is uh, you know accessible friendly we do not see much of you no know, offices or work space or even public places uh no products available in india have been primarily developed in the uh, uh no western world where affordability is not a criteria as i earlier said in the west assistive tech products are sold directly to the users through retail stores or e-commerce channels we do not have one like here in india uh yeah so no we are all uh, no uh, as i said uh, startups are uh, startups not just startups many uh, No, good-hearted people are coming with uh, good forums, no, to improve the situation nowadays, and uh, no, we are happy to see that. So uh, most PWDs don't have an income to afford assistive tech. Uh, we don't have a network to reach, uh, no, the disabled people. At the market, uh, I mean, at the market, uh, market is small. The cost, the cost goes high. That's why you know many ventures do not come into the uh, assistive tech space. So One thing I would like to add to what uh, you just mentioned, Pravin, is uh, um, like you mentioned in one example. If we start with assistive tech, eventually it can go and scale across. For example, like I think uh, even uh, Dexterware, Mouseware can do that, and even we have seen possibilities for Akar puzzles. Uh, even though they are helpful for visually challenged kids, they yeah. are being found useful for the sighted kids in the schools we are implementing. So that is one positive sign. So there is a scope for uh, uh, having some sustainability that can be redirected to this segment as well. Yeah. yeah. Exactly what you said is right. Well, that's why in the initial also I mentioned an example where you no know, a few texts like speech texts were found were invented only for uh, you no know, uh, you no know, PWDs but later extended to normal people as well. So that's the same visionary we or Dexterware is also doing. Now we are developing a mouse for the upper limb uh, uh, disabled people but later oh who knows 
uh, that might be yeah, a normal way to interact with computers with help. So yeah, uh, assistive text, but no, we need to find the yeah, right channel to make sure it reaches the people. Yeah. So yeah, so to you know, end with, I would like to you know, request every entrepreneur to try at least once to venture into social entrepreneurship. You know, it can be anything, uh, agri-tech, healthcare, assistive tech, et cetera. It's more like you know, giving uh, back to uh, something to the society. Finally, you know, I wish the very best to your future endeavors towards everything. So thank you. Thanks a lot to you all. I mean, for this wonderful speech. Like, we just have, you know, like one two questions on uh, from the audience. I mean, the first question was, uh, what are the problems which you face while scaling up? I mean, it, assistive tech might work well in the lab conditions, but it uh, they might have a lot of uh, problems in heuristic approach, like when we scale up. So, can you tell us something regarding, you know, uh, the problems which you face and how we can we can overcome it and so on. Sure, sure. So uh, I can tell about uh, one such example uh, pertaining to this. So what happened is that, no, I said we are developing a mouse for the upper limb disabled. So we were under the assumption that people uh, uh, with, with just head mobility can operate our devices. But when we interacted with uh, you no know, few users like... Uh, uh, you know, with cerebral palsy, they found that, I mean, we realized that their head movement was also not stable. It was like on a cross position. So we had to calibrate the sensors accordingly. Uh, so what I suggest is that you work on an assistive tech with an educated guesses, with an, with an assumptions, go to the field, uh, test with them, take out the observations, come back to the lab. And next step, what you do is that you then call them to your lab and you no know, work with them simultaneously it's all uh, you know how assistive tech uh, uh, you know, comes up right i can add something there like uh, so like you mentioned uh, sriram in the lab conditions things are fine because we have a user group and we are testing we get feedback but the second thing is if, if we take the visually challenged community we don't know where the rest of the visually challenged community is other than what, what we can reach out to in the city like city is a better place where at least there are blind schools and people are organized. But if we talk about those millions of people out there, how do we find them out? And how do they know that we exist, right? Uh, for them to even um, know and then come and buy things. So there is first lack of awareness, uh, the network or finding out where the people are. And uh, the then the uh, challenge of uh, uh, how do they know about us and then can they afford it? So after knowing that we exist, do they have the confidence that our solution is going to help them? There is a, there is an orientation needed. There is some, some push needed for them because they have existed in a space where they are being told that they cannot do things. So we have to also motivate them that it is possible for you and do things because I've seen in field research that till 27 years of age, some of Visually challenged people do not even know that they can use computers while there are enough solutions out there helping them to use computers. So it is a revelation for them after a quarter of their life is passed that they can do something. So that awareness, that reach are some core challenges. How probably we need to reach out to communities which are already connected and, and take their support. Uh, second thing is, uh, there is a bit more of uh, initiative needed, uh, I think, uh, in bringing together uh, this awareness, both from the startup end uh, and also from the government end, probably. There can be a bit more of support there. Um, yeah, so those those can be some starting points. Great, thank you. Uh, that's just a final question, like what many students ask here is like, they're interested in working into assistive tech, but they don't know where to start from. I mean, which book to read or, you know, which course to take and something. So can you just uh, give some guidance on it? I mean, yeah. I would, I would like to uh, answer that. So I would say first start with uh, the, the whole point of why this community was called humanistic dot initiative was, uh, was because uh, it, it is about humans. It's actually not about technology, right? So learn, learn about, disabled innovators in your history, the current people, there are so many disabled innovators around the world. Like uh, currently we have uh, a CEO uh, who's, who's, uh, who's uh, Mr. Zubi on Wuta and he himself is visually impaired. So 
he is not visually impaired from from birth but he got visually impaired at the age of 21 right at the time when he was starting his college so he lost his military job he lost his medical job he had to study his entire phd by scanning thousands of pages on the computer um, uh, and and then read it virtually right like imagine scanning all this huge college books and then having to zoom every page and read so that's how he completed his degree so out of that frustration uh, you know he founded a he, he founded his own company called Think and Zoom, so which actually uh, taps your electromagnetic signals from your brain using a wearable device, and then it connects with your phone to uh, to to zoom in and and uh, read whatever it is—a visiting card or a text or what, right? So his vision right now is is uh, to a point where he can see only the capital E, you know, when we go to hospitals and check. So I would say learn about the, the pain, the frustration, and the success what disabled innovators have gone through from Helen Keller to Stephen Hawking to Sylvia Onweta in the current generation. And, and learn about the current challenges, right? You, you, uh, you see a person on the road who's, who's especially challenged. How can I help that person? So question yourself. Write down all the problems that, as a human, if you lose something, what are the problems that you will face typically, right? If you can't see what are the problems you face day to day in the life as a human, as a woman, right? Being uh, blind as a woman also has many safety challenges. So you have to just research on what kind of problems that will create on a personal level and on a professional level if you yourself are especially able, right? So I think that's a starting point. And a, and a small point to add there is um, just like humanistic co-design mentions human in the center. Uh, put yourself uh, around the people who you want to design for. Go to them, talk to them. Uh, and the interesting point is if we are directly to address the entrepreneur's con confusion on where to start for assistive technology, you would want to understand today's problem. So what was a problem before COVID might not be a problem now and something else would have cropped up. And so what's problem in Chennai might not be a problem somewhere in Thirunal Valley. Right? So... Uh, so you, you would want to look at solving the problem that you have access to and probably in the process of solving a problem, you see a pattern of how that scales up and is applicable to various other kids. So we started with saying we'll design geometry for visually challenged, but we see that it is applicable for sighted kids also. The aim was not to go big. The aim was to solve a small problem at hand. And Dr. Kyle also, in his he teaches assistive technology at MIT. Uh, so there... He asks the students in that semester uh, to choose one person in their in around around uh, within Boston, and design a solution by the end of the semester for that single person. It will be so customized. Probably that solution might not be used for anyone else, but in the process you will see patterns or themes that can be scaled to others. So that is where the startup evolves. So if we start saying the company should be big, probably we are losing the ground reality of what the problem is. If you start with the problem, we understand, okay, this problem is prevalent for many and that can become a startup. So that is one thing I would suggest. Yes, sir. Actually, there's just a follow-up question on this, sir. This is what you answered. Like, there were some uh, apprehensions that, is the group only confined with engineers or uh, can people in some other stream also uh, no, come? Absolutely from? not. Uh, if you're talking about HCDI, is that right? Are you talking about HCDI as a group? Yeah, yeah HCDI or this tech or in the field like yes basically. it is not it is absolutely not for example i am i am a designer i'm a user experience designer i did my master's uh, in user experience design for two years prior to that um, i was working as a software developer and my bachelor's is in electronics and communication so i'm a mixed bag of so I do know some practicalities of how things are. I think Vamika also told me during a discussion with her that she also has gone through different careers and stuff. So, and eventually, most probably, uh, many of us have chosen engineering and then we know that our passions are different. But that way is uh, definitely not. It is not restricted to being engineers. It is, it is about, um, it is about, kind of understanding the problem and getting the skills what you need uh, if you see probably i entered with the with the intention of enabling something but i am doing a community connection now i'm reaching out to people i'm i'm applying for funds which is nothing to do with what what my degree is right so we gather skills as we go through uh, 
uh, what education does to us in our in our degree or in our whatever we are doing is organizes and gives us the skills but when you go on ground you see the need for what you need to do and you learn the skills so it is a mixed bag i think radhika has a totally different background from a petroleum engineering to to what she is doing yeah. now in terms of consulting and connecting the community i think so, with Praveen, we would agree he was he was into technicalities earlier but now he is looking at all the logistics and ground ground level implementation aspects so we would want support from uh, various uh, various directions and uh, and there is always opportunity for us to make things better than what it is now. At least in assistive technology field, there is huge opportunity for sure. Thank you. Though there are more questions, we have unfortunately have a time frame. So yeah. really sorry. So so thanks a lot for uh, joining thanks. with us. It was a really good uh, like series. Yeah. Thanks. Likewise. Yeah. Moving forward, I would say next year or from this year, I, I would expect more projects and more members to start with for us. So it's uh, consider this as a free mentorship on innovation and incubation uh, from, from MIT professor and from a global community, uh, you know? So yeah, I'm requesting all professors and students from all departments, regardless, to, to please contribute some part of your talent or skill towards assistive tech. Thanks a lot. And, yeah. and, and in case if you guys still have questions, you can write to us. Uh, we'll be really happy to email uh, you the reply. Uh, Radhika would have shared uh, the contacts with you already uh, or I can also ping my contact right here um, and, uh, and having and as I do that thanks a lot for the wonderful opportunity I see some great dignitaries here um, in the session and also probably who are listening uh, live later uh, thanks a lot for this opportunity and we look forward to collaborate and see what we can do like Radhika mentioned together yeah you're on mute, Sriram. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank I, you. I, I thank, you. Yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, 